morning, sunny on top of 28 today for Perth. Coming up, cool as bro. Cool as bro. Cool as bro. That's how you say it. <laughs> Kiwi mates who've become hot property after taking down an alleged burglar in Scarborough. Wow. My old stopping ground. So let's begin this hour with Perth News Live and Local with Matt Tenney. Good morning, Nat and Koshi. Police have arrested a man, allegedly finding him with guns and drugs on a street in Jundana in Perth's north. The organised crime squad has spent the night searching the man's property. Let's go live to 7 News reporter Rebecca Picton king Beck, the tactical response group had to be called in to help arrest this man. Matt, it was an extremely serious situation. Police have gone through this house behind me where they allegedly found two handguns and a quantity of methamphetamine. Now, organised crime squad detectives arrested the armed man on the side of Kinsella Street. Tactical response group officers were also called in to help. The man was then brought back to his house where detectives spent the night searching the property. It's not known at this stage how much meth was seized during this raid. Matt. Beck live in Jundana, thank you. There's been a big response to a fresh appeal to catch a WA schoolboy killer. Dozens of calls have been made to Crime Stoppers and police are following up leads into the murder of Jared Ross. 11-year-old Jared was snatched from a Rockingham street in 1997. His body was found two weeks later in a pine plantation in Baldivis. Police have never revealed how he was killed. Officers are pursuing new suspects. If you have any information which could help solve this case, Call Crime Stoppers. The number is 1800 333 000 and there is a $100,000 reward on offer. The Pauline Hanson juggernaut heads to Bunbury this morning after sweeping Perth. The One Nation leader has unveiled her candidates for the March state election. The youngest, just 20. Jeff Parry has more. One Nation's class of 2017. Some of them a good chance to get elected at the March poll. Their leader, Pauline Hanson, offering voters something new. Are they truly happy with Colin Barnett and the Liberal Party? Are they truly happy with the Labor Party? 20-year-old John Zurakowski is the youngest candidate to fly the One Nation flag. People want something a change, people want something different, and I believe I offer that. Jenny Bennett believes people are ready for sweeping change. I want to be a part of that change, I want to be a part of the new millennium, I want to be part of the new push forward. Most of the candidates are men, just five women in Pauline Hanson's new lineup, but she says she has no concerns about that. I don't count the numbers of how many women I have. The other political parties can do that. I don't believe in tokenism. Enjoying coffee in Kings Park with her new candidates, Miss Hanson promised to shake things up for her opponents. I will be, and I am a threat to their power, their corruption, their lies, and treating people in this country like mushrooms. Policy she'll leave to her local party members, but she believes jobs, crime and the cost of living are the main issues for voters. Not about the burger, that's a side issue. The Greens today urging Liberal and Labor not to do deals with One Nation for preferences. Reject the politics of racism, don't legitimise racism. Jeff Parry, Seven News. Three Kiwi mates have become hot property after taking down an alleged burglar in Scarborough. Tyron Davis, Logan Burke and Dylan Davis appeared on 7 News this week after they performed a citizen's arrest in their unit. How's this? Almost 400 people tried to befriend the tradies within hours of that report going to air. And the rugby playing crime stoppers have even been stopped in the street for selfies. A 30-year-old man has been charged over the break-in. He's due to face court again now next month. It's one of the biggest upsets in Australian Open history. Novak Djokovic has been sent packing in the second round. The six-time champion was stunned by world number 117 Denis Istomin from Uzbekistan. Djokovic led by two sets to one before Istomin closed out a gripping five-set victory after almost five hours. All the credits to, to Denis for playing, playing amazing and he deserved to win. It is unreal, so to beat Novak in five sets, it's a great win. It's only the second time in seven years Djokovic has lost to a player outside the top 100. Adopted Aussie Daria Gavrilova survived a three-set battle against Croatian Anna Konya. Gavrilova went missing in the second set, but recovered to take the match in two hours. I'm happy with the way I'm playing right now, so... 
Nothing much to improve, um, just a few tactical things. The 22-year-old joins Ash Barty as the only two Australian women in the third round. Perth's weather, perfect for your Friday. We're heading for a sunny top of 28 degrees. Here's a shot from the Sunrise drone flying a little low this morning. Right now in the city, it's 17. That's the latest live from Perth. Here's Eddie. A man has escaped a massive blaze that destroyed a house in Brisbane overnight. Have a look at these pictures. The flames quickly spread through the home at Cooparoo in the city's southeast around midnight. Sunrise reporter Lisa Goddard is there at the scene. And Lisa, was the man hurt at all? Yeah, Eddie, like you said, when you look at those pictures, it's hard to believe anyone could get out alive. But I'm happy to report that the 84-year-old man who was inside made it out and when he isn't hurt. But, of course, you can understand he would be in immense shock right now. Now, the fact that he made it out alive or made it out without being hurt at all is all thanks to a hero neighbour. A young man heard the fire, ran across and started banging on that front door until he got the 84-year-old man out and got him to safety. A short time ago, we spoke to a neighbour who lives right next door Deborah Austin and she explained in her words what she saw unfold this morning. I heard my daughter and her boyfriend screeching and I ran out and I saw that first bit of flame coming out of the um, front um, window here behind the motorhome and, and it was like get the garden hose, get this, get that. And Eddie, by looking at those pictures, you can understand that that garden hose was, you know, she had no chance at all. It took five fire trucks here, hours to get that blaze under control. The house is completely destroyed. Hours on, it is still smouldering, and firefighters have been, you know, dousing hot spots uh, in the last hour or so. So now the question will be, what started the fire? We're being told by witnesses that the elderly man told them that it began with a fan. He was trying to put the fire out, but stood no chance. Yeah, very scary night. Thank you, Lisa. Wild weather has lashed South Australia overnight, forcing 60,000 homes into darkness. Live now to 7 News reporter Stacey Lee, who's in Adelaide. And Stacey, emergency crews had a busy night. You must be sick of these power outages. Absolutely, Eddie. The SES said they responded to more than 300 calls for help and they expect that number to increase as people wake up this morning and assess the damage. Most of those were for trees down on cars and power lines. The car behind me here in Prospect caught the brunt of a tree that was nearby and the house just behind that had its roof torn off in those strong winds and heavy rain that lashed the state. A spectacular show in the skies above Adelaide. 74,000 lightning strikes in just two hours across the city. Wind gusts of 111 kilometres an hour are recorded. 25 millimetres of rain fell in only 23 minutes northwest of the city. SES crews called to clean up fallen trees and power lines. This tree, struck by lightning, fell on a parked car. Its owner had lent it to her son. I came outside and saw the tree being struck by lightning and three of the branches had split off. I said, oh, real sorry, but tree branches fall on top of it. It's two cars one week, so yeah, she wasn't super impressed. The storm front caused blackouts in the city after crossing the Air Peninsula. Almost 60,000 properties plunged into darkness across Adelaide as well as regional communities in the state's west. The state power network says some homes may remain in darkness well into the weekend. It's less than three weeks since 155,000 properties lost power after wild weather. In September, a once in 50 year violent storm caused an almost statewide blackout. Now, Eddie, thankfully it appears the storm has passed over South Australia now. It is heading east towards Victoria, but it will be a frustrating day for those residents still without power. There's no time yet for reconnection because the damage is so widespread. Rescuers have removed three bodies from a luxury hotel in central Italy engulfed by an avalanche. They're still searching through the snowy rubble for any signs of the dozens of people still missing, now feared dead. Rescuers battled through the night in heavy snow to reach the hotel. It took six hours, the only way to get through, on skis. Finally, they find what was the four-star hotel. Inside, what used to be the foyer in ruins. A wall of snow so powerful it forced its way through the walls. The comfortable rooms being enjoyed by tourists now entombed. 
At least 27 guests and staff were inside, including children. It's not hard to imagine why rescuers fear many are dead. It's reported some guests trapped in the hotel sent text messages worried about the shaking ground, but a final text asking how they are received no response. Rescuers tunnelled their way through the snow in search of the missing. At least one person was found alive nearby, no doubt in shock, but now safe. Italian officials say the courageous rescuers faced unbearable conditions and they're working to get emergency vehicles closer to the scene. But the longer it takes for them to get there, the lower the chances of finding anyone else alive. Hugh Whitfeld, 7 News. Around 25 firefighters are feared dead after a burning high-rise building collapse in Iran. The 17-storey commercial building in the capital, Tehran, came down on live TV, trapping firefighters inside. Oh Crews had been battling the blaze for several hours before it fell. Soldiers, sniffer dogs and rescue workers are sifting through the rubble to find any survivors. Almost 200 others were hurt and taken to hospital for treatment. Now here's 7 News US Bureau Chief Mike Amor in Washington. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Eddie. In less than 24 hours, Barack Obama will turn over the reins of power to Donald Trump. The president-elect touched down at an Air Force base uh, outside Washington a couple of hours ago on a military plane rather than his own. And for more, we're joined by 7 News Chief Correspondent Chris Reason and 7 News US Correspondent Ash Mullaney, both here in Washington. Chris, Trump spoke at a function at uh, Trump Hotel in his honour. He did, Mike. Good morning to you. Yeah, he came straight from the Andrews Air Force Base to his uh, Trump International Hotel, just two blocks from where I'm standing, uh, and raised eyebrows immediately. A lot of people saying, why is he doing it? There's two functions he's going to be holding there today. He returns there later this evening for another function in his honour. Some critics are saying that's too, too many. But uh, anyway, before the assembled guests of ambassadors, lawmakers, and some of the cabinet picks that he's assembled, he announced in classic Trump style that we have by far the highest IQ of any cabinet ever. That was also an interesting moment as he called on his wife Melania to stand up and speak before that crowd. She obviously wasn't ready for that moment. Let's have a look at how she handled it. <laughs> Would you like to say a couple of words? <laughs> it's great to be here and thank you all for your support. And um, tomorrow we're starting the work um, ahead. A lot of responsibility, a lot to take care of get the feeling he'll be in trouble for asking you to do that uh, later tonight, Mike. Also, uh, uh, President-elect Trump headed off to Arlington uh, National Cemetery today. Lay a wreath in honour of the fallen. And just quickly, some breaking news. Barack Obama has announced in the last few minutes that he's uh, uh, commuted the sentences, slashed the sentences for another 330 prisoners, making him uh, uh, a president that uh, sets records in terms of uh, cutting back prisoner sentences in this country. Mike. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I think you, uh, Donald Trump might be in the doghouse before he ends up in the White House with his wife. And, and Ash, uh, how are Americans feeling uh, there ahead of the big day tomorrow? Mike, I think Americans are excited. Well, certainly the Trump supporters who were down here today are excited, that's for sure. They've come from all over America, Ohio, Florida, New York, and they all have the same message. They all feel that it's time for change. Of course, Donald Trump's slogan is to make America great again, and there's plenty of that around here today. Souvenir stands down here near Pennsylvania Avenue with uh, hats and badges and flags for Donald Trump. More flags over here ahead of tomorrow's inauguration. And crowds are starting to build down here near Pennsylvania Avenue where the parade will be coming through tomorrow. Of course, Donald Trump will be have a front row seat tomorrow. He'll be sitting in a viewing stand near the White House. Uh, but certainly lots of visitors, lots of people that have come from all around America to see this historic day tomorrow, Mike. Thanks, Ash. And you can watch as Donald Trump is inaugurated as America's next president live from 3 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow on 7. I'll be hosting the coverage from Washington, D.C. Eddie, as we speak, I'm noticing they're moving in hundreds of buses, parking them nose to tail to prevent anyone driving any vehicles into the parade route.